hopefully. Hang on, can I ask you a minute? David's already in the. David's already turned up. So why has he turned up again? Oh. I can't see him. No, I can't see him. Huh? He's not on my list. No, not yeah. on my page no. either. Oh, there, there he is. There he is. Can't see it's, him yet. He's maybe struggling to get on. Uh, it's quite probably quite cold in Grange. <laughs> <laughs> My grandson, when he was out in far eastern Russia, drilling for uh, copper and uh, copper and gold, there he lived in a yurt, mm. and oh. that was a a, a local um, um, tent, if you like. Yeah. But it was, apparently it was so warm and cozy in there. He absolutely yeah, they are it. very nice here. It was yeah. about minus twenty outside, yeah. but it was in there. It was gorgeous. He reckoned. But the proper ones yeah. are made out of like felt. Oh they, yeah, they're really well insulated. Oh yeah. yes. Wait, wait, was it one of those types of yurts that you had to cuddle up with all the local women? <laughs> That's <laughs> what I yeah, never asked him that. Yeah. An igloo. Yeah. You still got to cuddle up. Tommy made yurts, didn't he? For a uh, well, yeah, he he managed a firm that had yurts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, David. Hello, David. Hello, David. Hello, David. Hello, David. Yeah. Well, well done. We can see you as well now. Uh, uh. Do you know? Do you know what? I don't know what the hell's going on. When we were in Fort Churchill in Manitoba, there <laughs> uh, there was uh, a cinema in the on the Amer American uh, army site, and it was the Igloo Cinema. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And was it there, there was the uh, Hudson Fur Trading Company. That was our bar we went in. Mm. With a sign above the bar saying, don't sell liquor to the Indians. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh gosh. Uh, Did you watch that series called The English? I'm just oh. watching it now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, about the, the settlers in America and how they yeah. treated the native Indians. Yeah. I what was know. To watch more, it's no, it's uh, but what's clever about it that horrible things are going on, but they don't show it, they just leave it to your imagination. Mm. So oh. you just hear the sounds and you just imagine what's going on, but they don't actually show anything. Yeah. I think your imagination is, is even worse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think the non natives don't like it, uh, um, spoke about too much. No. No. Still going on as well, that discrimination. Oh, yes, sadly, yeah. Big yeah. time. Yeah. It's, you know, what, what my biggest problem is when, when you've got people from a certain racial group, i got to say this very wisely because I could get kicked off YouTube completely, a certain racial group claiming that they are the first people in North America. Yeah. And we don't need to spell that out any further. No. And Native Americans are really, really angry, and and and, and so rightly. There's yeah. there's never been um, a U.S. president that's Native American. No, and I think no. they think it's a brilliant thing that somebody from Afro Caribbean background has become U.S. president, which is great. Yeah, I can't argue yeah. with that. But no. but, but they're certainly no, not Native American. You're right. No. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely. You know, they talk about the first woman president and the first afro-caribbean mm. and i'm just thinking mm. what about the people who actually is their country mm. Mm. Yep. Oh, what hey controversial do you know what i'm one of these hipsters look at that <laughs> oh wow <laughs> to you to me yes it does actually <coughs> it, it, you know what i could be I could be a U.S. SEAL, couldn't I? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can see it. No? It's quiet. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you for that, Pete, your wonderful contribution. Right. Talking about contributions, David. There's something in the paper about 50 million year old mummies. Where? In the tombs in Egypt. <laughs> 50 million? Yeah. Can you believe that? <laughs> 50 million? No. What? No, it's got to be 50,000, even 50,000. David, we need more details about that. My mind's going. Uh, 
<laughs> we want to know more details, David. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> they, must have, they must have been from Cornwall. Um, Drina. <laughs> no, no news. Oh, right. Okay. You're not I know you're jealous control. of us Celts. Who is? <laughs> Who? Carl what? is. He's very jealous of us Celts. What nationality do you think I am then? Alien? <laughs> I don't answer that. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. What else? Wait. Um, oh God. Anne. I watched a program yesterday that said everything we know about the past is wrong, and it was an uh, archaeologist talking. <laughs> and I must say, I didn't fully understand it. It wasn't Neil Oliver, was it? No, it was. He'd just written a book with David. Uh, Graeber, who is an anthropologist, and I know David Graeber, but uh, I, can't, I didn't catch this man's name. But he was saying he thinks things that early man could, could was able to do, organise things. We tend to think everything came after the, um, the agricultural revolution, but he thinks early man was able to organise themselves in quite large groups, which hasn't been recognised or something, that's something well, like we that. Have, we, we, we've, been say, we've been saying that. Oh, they must have done. Yeah, yeah. But in, And he was saying it was, it, but that there seems to be this, this happened and this happened and this happened. And of course, we had, we had covered some of it because, for instance, yes. when you're talking about the agricultural revolution, it didn't all happen at once, did it? It was in one place and bits happened and there's still been hunter-gatherers in Papua New Guinea until recently, you know, so, and... So, but it was, I, was, I didn't fully follow it, really. It was a bit academic, but, um, yeah, it was quite... Oh, they I must have watched Carl. Appreciate their intelligence. Pardon? They must have watched Carl on YouTube doing these Yeah, classes. yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> doing these classes, yeah. <laughs> well, you can't, you see, you can ask Carl a question, but you can't ask them, can you? It just, uh, <laughs> so it sort of helps when you can ask. Do, 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 do you know one of, one of the things to our credit we, we do actually cover very topical things um and 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 that that that's been something that we've been able to do and um and the the big problem is with the big problem is with archaeology at this minute is actually the internet uh because you know everybody thinks that they can be an expert and yeah. they can get in real trouble and yeah. um you know and yeah. it, it's it's very problematic. Yeah, I mean, this, this archaeologist had come from a good university, and as I say, he was, and he, you know, he was a properly trained archaeologist. Whether he was right in what he was saying, he's sort of something else, you know, because um, some of it seemed to agree with what I'd been learning from you, and this other bit was all about it being it with a different timing of when they could do their organisation almost earlier. They thought. Yes, yes, yes. So you want, I don't think, because you do get a lot of really silly people on YouTube, you know, as you say, I agree, but I don't think he was one of them. Fair enough. Fair enough, thank you. Uh, I think we've got one person left, and that's Andy. No, don't really have anything to say today, actually, thank you. Nothing, nothing, didn't come across anything interesting over the week, archaeologically. Okay. I think what we could, we should now do is do a little bit of an overview of Orkney and then come into Orkney in a little bit more detail next week when my voice is um, back. So that's what we're going to do. Um, that was my cop out this week and that's exactly where we're going to fly to. Um, right. We've got the so, ferry. What, 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 what do you want? What about the ferry, Pete? I suppose we took the ferry. We didn't fly to Orkney. We took the ferry. We flew to Inverness. Yes. Yeah, but but I I've I've we went back, I, back, I, I've, I've done both piece. I've done both. All right then. Okay. I've done both. So I think where we need to start with specifically is Orkney and a map. And there we go. Let's just chuck in there and just sort of do a little bit of a discussion overview. Um, and it should move us. Go on, you know you want to. 
Good, let's get that down. Oh, God. I loved all right. of me. You loved all the women, didn't you, Pete? <laughs> oh, God. Right, okay, Let, let's just try and get this up again. We just had it, right, okay. No, we don't want to do that. We've, uh, we're going to do that. Um, well, I've just got that on there. How can I be offline? I just had it. No. Right, go. Ah. How do I get rid of this bar, Andy? Are you there, Andy? So, sorry, I'd switched my mic off. I can only see you. I can't see what you're getting rid of. Oh, right. Oh, right. I thought I'd already shared. No. No, you're not sharing. Oh, God, it would help if one of you told me I was sharing. Oh, oh you're, you're not sharing. sharing. You're trying to share. Sharing's caring, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sharing. You are. Yep. All the drinks and food I Ooh. bought, Peter, whilst we've been out. Hmm. Oh, we can see that. Mm. That bar along the bottom. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me just get rid of mine. Oh no, got rid of the wrong thing there. Oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. That looks good. It that's a good map. map. I tell you what, as maps go, that's a good map. Look at that. Do you know that looks really good? So, one of the things that we know from the landscape of Orkney is that it proves to be one of the most diverse, expansive studies that we could ever perceive in British archaeology in regards to one major period of our history and that being the Neolithic. You've got it sort of side on. It's not the type of image that you would typically think of in regards to looking at Orkney. But as this map shows, there are islands after island in regards to the Orkney archipelago. Those that may have been to Orkney and those that, that have heard me talking about Orkney and those that have been to Orkney with me will know of the great diverse background that Orkney gives us to understanding not just the Neolithic period, but the period of British prehistory. Orkney is dominated by places that are often in the news, such as the Ness of Brodga, or places like Scara Bray, or the remoteness of its islands. One of the things that we can clearly perceive linked to the British idea and the British connection with our sense of being islanders is that Orkney once signed in to being part of the British Isles. But we do believe that the land bridge between Orkney and mainland Britain was lost maybe as far back as 10,000 years ago and beyond. But up until that point, most of the little islands that you can see in front of you today, and by the way, I think I sounded very similar to David Attenborough today. <laughs> but one of the things is that most of these islands would have been hillocks or ranges in regards to a greater island, what? which yeah, over time, they become individual little islands. The word in the middle of the screen that says mainland, that is mainland Orkney. I've mentioned this before. When you do go to Orkney, 
When people on Orkney talk about the mainland, they do not talk about Scotland. They talk about the main island. On this, it would seem South and North Island, when in fact, if it's placed around the right way, East and West, okay. up west of the mainland. That's what we talk about, East and West mainland. And there you have Kirkwall. It's a very lucky thing that happened in the First World War. That the German Navy, the Kaiser Marine, scuttled off the coast of St. Mary's Hope. It wasn't very lucky for the Kaiser Marine, but it was very lucky for the British Navy just before the Second World War, when they decided to drag a number of these vessels up to make their South Ronaldley, which is marked as St. Mary's Hope, as part of the greater mainland of Kirkwall, creating a great harbour, a great enclosed harbour. The reason why those boats were dragged in to make the causeway between St. Margaret's Hope and the overall mainland was to stop German submarines getting into the harbour. As we know, it didn't completely succeed. But that is a tragedy for another day, preserved on a museum on the island of Hoy. And with that said, we could overall say that the landscape that the Neolithic people saw in regards to Orkney has changed a great, great deal over their own existence all the way up to the present day. The population of Orkney is in regards to 20,000 plus people today, but back in the 1800s, it was close on 40,000. There's been a great population drop, but the island, the islands of the mainland of Orkney, the population is slowly increasing again. To take account of the great landscape that you perceive within the Orkney archipelago. But before that happens, and before the repopulation of this land actually takes place, in amongst it is this great prehistoric wealth of archaeology that dominates the mainland and the island archipelago. I have been so lucky to go to Orkney on many occasions. And I'm not going to share why and the real reasons why I originally came to Cumbria and why I stayed and lived in Arnside. But I was given a week off this one time and I was told that I could, I could do whatever I liked for a week. And I decided to go, I decided to go off on my travels and I decided to visit some islands. Some of those islands would be the island of Sanday and eventually I would get out to visit all the islands between the seven, eight visits that I've made to Orkney since 2012. And Peter's right, Orkney is one of the most beautiful places in the whole British Isles. I'm gonna indulge myself just, just slightly, just lightly, just only slow closely with the island of Hoy. Hoy itself is one of the last great wildernesses of the whole of Great Britain. And the reason why there's a little primeval woodland on the island of Hoy called Briardale. And it's a woodland that I managed to go to. And I actually got engaged there. And I felt so lucky to get there and touch a piece of primeval landscape 
a part of Britain that very, very few people go to. And that is to be shared and remembered. What I'd like to do is I'd like to look a little bit at this map and show some of the places that we're just going to mention briefly today. And then those Neolithic sites will take one by one over the next few months. I would like to say one thing whilst it's on the back of my mind. We will obviously be having a break for Christmas this year, but we will have a recorded class out there, just as I did last year. So when Margaret sat there after eating all her Christmas dinner, there will be a YouTube recording to watch. And you can listen to me, Margaret, for two hours, trolling on. Let's explore this map before we look at the images. One of the things that you do, you, you fly into the airport at Kirkwall or you get the ferry down into this harbour here, which is known as Houghton. And you, you come into here and that, that's where you would get the ferry from mainland Scotland. However, you could get a longer journey from mainland Scotland into Kirkwall. They'll take you all the way to Aberdeen. That's definitely an eight hour trip. But if we, and there's Scarpa, as in Scarpa flow, you've obviously heard about that. So Kirkwall, Kirkwall Airport. And then what you then have is on this Winford Hill Khan. I've been there. It's, it's a very interesting location, like Renabista Earth House, which is a souterrain. In fact, there are so many locations that are not marked on here because the island is completely full. You follow this road and you look up, you see the Winford Hill Tarn. You stop there and you see a little earthen mound known as Renabista Earth House. And you're welcome to see that anytime. In fact, if not all of the monuments on Orkney are very much accessible. Can I give you a throwaway fact? Binstown is where they had one of the one of the first airfields anywhere in Britain. Interesting fact that. If we go along here, we follow this road, and when, then we get to this locality, Stennis. And if you're lucky enough, you can go over to see Mice Howe, which is one of the finest burial chambers, stroke chambers, to be found anywhere in Britain. It's a beautiful location within a beautiful landscape. You go a little bit further on in the car, you take the turning, the B9055, and you see this locality, the Standing Stones of Stennis. Beautiful locality, beautiful stones, and within a beautiful setting, overlooking two lochs. The loch on the west, the loch on the east. If you go over to Barn House there, Barn House Settlement, that is only part of a settlement that was much more extensive further north because the loch there itself covers much of the Neolithic landscape that you can no longer see within this beautiful landscape of Orkney. Standing stones, oh, two standing stones there, two standing stones flanking as you go over the causeway over to Brodger, the nest of Brodger. Now, the nest of Brodger is part of a world heritage site, and it's it's there's security there. And um, 
And Pete was actually with me when security pulled us over and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm an archaeologist. I know we're OK with that. But it's a site that they're really protective over. And when we look at the Ness of Brodga lecture, you will understand why. But we haven't finished yet. You go up here, you walk all the way along. And then there's little stones across this landscape. And the Ring of Brodga, one of the most important standing stone sites anywhere in Britain. And I will make the statement, one of the earliest standing stone sites anywhere in Britain, earlier than Stonehenge in Wiltshire. Note these, Salt No, South No, Plum Cake Mound No. Those are places that have not really been explored. In fact, you might feel that all of the landscape of Orkney has been excavated. We haven't, I don't think touching the surface is the right word. We haven't, we haven't done 20% of it. So if you're surprised with what we already know, there's a lot more to be found and a lot more to be excavated. If you travel up this road, you can see cards everywhere. Look at these cards, Buchan Chambered Card. Now that's a very interesting one. Buchan Chambered Card or Buchan Chambered Tomb might actually be a large arrangement of stones. And it may have actually been originally a standing stone site. And it's actually owned by an archeologist. Strangely enough, I fell out with him. Um, mind you, it was because Bill fell out with him. So, you know, I was, there was an argument and whatever. And yeah, the, the only time I've actually defended one of my students, but that's something else anyway. So Ring of Booker, and you go up there as well, another ring there, and you, you travel up this road and you keep going and you're looking within a beautiful landscape. And you can see all these different things like um, Orkney Folklore and Telling Centre. It's full of stuff. It's full of archaeology, right? And if you go further up, Scarabray, we don't want to do that, do we? We do because Scarabray is, is one of the most important Neolithic sites anywhere in Britain, if not Western Europe. If you were to put a list of worldwide Neolithic sites together, worldwide, may I add, Scarabray would be in that list of Neolithic worldwide sites because it's that important. It was found in 1850. We'll have a look at some of those images today. It's not doing a talk on it, but we'll look at some of the images. And it was believed to have been a place of the little people. Uh, it was believed to have been a place of, of it, you'll know, and we've shown you images of it before when we've done the overview, but, Scarabray is a lecture in itself, so let's not spoil that today. And we could go further down on this. And actually, we will visit some more places by looking at this, but we've got to go the other way. And if you sort of follow the roads, and it's got Isbister, very interesting location. And we keep going up, we keep going up, we keep going. This building looks big. Right, but it's not that the island looks big, but it's not. Bursay books, Bursay Bay tea rooms, and I'm gonna get something. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I've got something in this plastic bag. Right, I, I, I will show you in the break but I've got a bag of einkorn wheat, right? Einkorn wheat, which is actually produced at um, Barony Mill, right? 
this is actually from Dub's palm, right? But they do produce einkorn wheat. And I've got a bag of it here from another mill. But they do produce einkorn wheat from Barony Mill. It, it's a beautiful Berze Earl Palace. And interestingly enough, Ruff of Berze, that is an island in itself. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a tidal island. And the Bruff of Berze itself is full of archaeology. If you get, get trapped on there, right, it's a good thing. But, you know, it, it's, it's got Neolithic. It's got earlier. It's got sort of uh, later. It's got, um, it, it's got Pictish. There's Pictish stuff there. Viking is great. Let's love it. And interesting enough, there's a great intercourse between the uh, the Neolithic world and the Viking world with Orkney. Um, um, I need to explain that just briefly because the the Vikings were we know were in awe of the Neolithic world that was in front of them. And why is that? Well, when you go to Mice Howe, it's full of graffiti. Viking graffiti in Mice Howe, that chamber that I mentioned earlier on. And they wrote wonderful things. We will love this building and so on. But we know that the Vikings, Norwegian Vikings, had come from a world of timber and they came to a world of stone. We do know that the Norwegian Vikings came to Orkney first on the British Isles. That means they were the Norsemen the northern people um, and that Norseman northern people is basically the, the Norwegians on Orkney and the, the, the thing is they saw a deserted landscape of beautiful monuments and they were not able to understand what those beautiful monuments meant but they loved them and, and they in a way we, th we can thank the Vikings for not demolishing them all because I had respect for them. Um, so I think it's great that I'm saying that, you know, other civilizations have in respect and so on. Um, I want to find a location on you. Hang on a minute. Um, Burn of Swane. And I've just got to keep going there. Uh, hang on a minute. Oh, yep. I've got the wrong place. Ooh, I don't know my geologist as well as I thought I did. Um, Brock of Gurness, there's a Brock there, which is uh, not not a Neolithic building. It is 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 a Brock, um, a stone built conical shaped building, which some of them were 12, 15 meters high. Now that looked out over to this island, known as Rousey. Rousey itself is full is full of archaeology, massively full of archaeology. Um, and what we've got is that we've got, Rousey itself is believed to be an island, which you've got, there you go, Chambered Khans, you've got the Noah of um, Yaso, um, you've got all the landscape, which, which is fertile, that location there, Midhau Broch, Midhau Tomb and Chambered Khan. Now, the Midhau Tomb and Chambered Khan is what is actually shown in the book Ancient Britain by James Dyer. It's a wonderful Chambered Khan. And when they found it in the late 1940s, it was such an amazing site. They built an aircraft hangar over it. So future generations like us today can see the wonderful archaeological work that was undertaken there in the late, late 1940s, undercover. Where's that whammy? And if you follow the island, look at this. There's lots of archaeology, lots of place names all the way to this island. Um, and this island of Rousey itself, there you go. Um, you know, we, we go around the island and it's got all these modern memorials in amongst the Neolithic memorials and so on. And the one thing about Rousey itself, it, it's, it's one of those islands that Lord Colin Renfrew, the archeologist, he's, he's a Lord of archeology span in a house, a Lord which is very odd. Um, Lord Colin Renfrew, he wrote a paper that said that 
each of the communities on Rousey had a burial chamber or a chamber to place their dead into um, on a monument. And it, that's the island of Rousey there, Rousey. Um, sort of going a bit further, following back to the mainland, sort to the mainland, one thing that we cannot miss, right, is at at Tankeness, near Tankeness, there's a place called Mine How, not My How, but Mine How. It, it's a, it's like a, it's a weird souterrain type structure. It goes underground. Really interesting that we will be looking at that as well. But one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to take us over, over to, um, all the way over to place this island here which is South Ronaldsley um, I think I've got the location right I'm not sure I will say it um, I think St Margaret's Hope is the place that you've got the um, the Italian chapel the chapel that was made by um, um, Italian prisoners of war they made the chapel out of um, tin cans and don't, yeah believe it or not they did um, and basically what we've got, I, I'm not sure it's going to come up, but it, I, I can point, there it is. There it is. Um, there's there's um, basically the Tomb of the Eagles, and there it is, um, Banks Chamber Tomb, Tomb of the Eagles have been there. It, it's, it's a wonderful site. Um, and that is another site that we will be visiting, the Tomb of the Eagles. What I don't want to do is just, show you a map today and just do that i want to come onto the images but i'll do that after the break but what i've got to do is just show you some of the other islands um some of the other islands that sort of spread out from here um Chapinze, i've been there loved it um we've got the island of ide ide is a very strange one because ide itself is an island that when you sort of um I think the, the ferry comes in at Bankerland and you sort of go across this weird island. It's a really strange island full of Neolithic monuments. Um, the island of Sande, I stayed on the island of Sande. I love it. I I was actually going to buy a house on Sande. And it was a school building and I, I was going to, I, I was going to, buy a house there and um it was twenty thousand pounds this school building with a roof and water and electricity and everything and this was at the time that i was i was um living in our side and i just thought do i buy it i never did i never regretted not buying a building because i wouldn't be living in west wales now with everything that i've got here but uh i nearly ended up by living on the island of sunday um and there are supermarkets, um, Westray over there as well. Um, what else have we got? Um, Westray's got its own archaeology, and there's another island as well. Hang on a minute. Oh, God, I think it's North Ronaldsey. North Ronaldsey. That's really interesting. North Ronaldsey, you can really only get out there by plane. North Ronaldsey has another site that is very similar to Scarabray. North Ronaldsey. Remember that one when we talk about that other site, and we will visit it, North Ronaldsley. So all these beautiful islands, and it's it's a world that I I always want to go to, but I probably won't get out there for a few years. But again, this is so full, and somebody somebody asked. I was having a conversation with somebody today, and they basically said um we've got lots of we've got lots of iron age bronze age archaeology in west wales um and i said well actually barry where i came from used to have lots of iron age archaeology as well it's just because there's more people living in these areas we lose a lot of the archaeology and Orkney has still got a lot of its archaeology and it's it's to the credit of the the university highlands and islands which I'm proud to have my master's degree with um, is to their credit that they've got archaeologists that have been able to go out to these places and study them and to really sort of understand them 
Um, I'm just going to give you um, a few chuck away facts. Um, right, here we go. Right, okay. Peter, I'm going to have to ask you something. Which was the island that we went to that had the, tra which had the train? Oh, there it is. It was Breswick, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Just remembered. Bricewick. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the only time that I think Pete apologised to me for something. I can't remember what it was for, <laughs> Pete. Um, but, um, yeah, we, we got out to Bricewick. I, I had had a meltdown on the ferry. I can't you did, describe that's right. why. Yeah, yeah, you I had to walk off the ferry and we, I had to drive off. Yeah, I, I had a meltdown. I can't remember what you it did. was. but no, it's okay. But we went to Bricewick and there was, they had built a railway station on Bricewick, but it was, we found out it was a miniature railway, didn't we, Pete? Yeah. Yes, we did. I had a hell of a job turning around by that bloody railway and all. I think we got photographs of it, yeah, of the railway. I think station. that's where we fell. Out. I think that's where we fell out, Pete. You swore at me, then you apologised. Um, <laughs> More than likely. But um, we went to it was Scar, mm. and there is a place that we saw that there was lots of Neolithic stuff, mm. and Scar is the place where they found the Viking burial. Um, I know that's Viking period and not Neolithic, but we went to Scar um, and we looked along the coast and there was there was loads of when I say loads, there there was there was a um, there was a midden and in that midden it was full of artifacts from the Mesolithic period. Neolithic period, um, Iron Age, Viking, and you could pick out bits of pottery. And I was having to tell people to just leave it because, um, you know, it, it it was just so much of it. And I just because I knew that they were they were working on the island as archaeologists. I basically said, "Look, guys, uh, leave it, leave it there." And there was a Is that spinal where you bone. saw the baby bones? Yeah, the spinal bone of a child actually yeah. in profile. Mm. And I just thought, yeah, I just thought, we've got to leave that there, Pete. We've got to. Um, and I reported it to the university, and obviously, but they, they said that there were lots of human remains associated with the mid, and it was, it was something else. And it was a weird thing. It was like taking you guys on a really nice sunny day and showing you a touching history it was, as it, it is was amazing yeah and you can't get that it, it was like you can't pete knows what i'm talking about you can't i'm gonna say it this sounds so condescending you can't get what i'm saying because it was like you're touching the past you, you're not having to dig it up it's in front of you all the layers and you're touching it, bones, pottery, um, charcoal, you, you're, you can even sniff it, you can touch it, you can kiss it, you can love it. And it was there. And it, I was just having to say to people, just leave it. And uh, um, even though it was being eroded by the sea, you had to just leave it because if we'd have taken stuff out, it would have just been out of context. And it was great. It was brilliant. Special memory. That that's probably. Um, obviously, I have very special memories with Orkney, and that's got to be in the top three. And um, and actually, I'll, I'll I'll give you one other memory. Um, I told you last week that that obviously I'm I'm teaching you guys online and I'm going to continue to teach you online and this is probably going to be the only online archaeology class that I'll be teaching this time next year and the year after. So you're very lucky. Um, that sounds quite patronising, but um, um, I remember 
the we we had a trip to Orkney in 2013 and it didn't go well because we did too much. And I remember phoning my ex-wife and I remember saying, I remember saying, actually, um, I've decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna take on an arc uh, take on an acting career instead of an archaeology career. And she said, if only you'd have realized that when we were married, things would have worked out very differently. Um, she hated archaeology. Um, but that was a very powerful memory within an island of archaeology that had taught me and given me so much. It was telling me to go in a different direction. And I just ignored that back then. And now is where I am now today. So uh, it's using what I've got to give you something. And that is a lot more powerful. Um, yes. So that's the other thing. So lots of me massive memories with Orkney. So what I'm going to do now we will look at images after the break and we're going to ask questions. But what I am going to do is one more look at this map. So, um, again, we know where just south of Bursay, Scarabray, uh, the island of Hoy there, that big sort of mass there on the left, um, and all these other little islands up here and um, Holland's done um, being North Ronaldsley. Remember that one. I've been to most of these islands, not all of them, most of them. I've not been to North Ronaldsay. That's probably on my tick list. So as Pete's driving again, we could drive all the way up to Orkney and he'll probably end up slitting my throat with me moaning all the way. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, well, Pete will be moaning. He always moans. Right. OK, uh, Moni, Pete, talk to me. Well, I, I, I absolutely loved uh, Orkney, and I say I went back on my own with my camper, uh, and I visited the uh, uh, the nest and the uh, the World War Two um, um, the w World War Two defence area, uh, which was which, which is uh, all uh, fenced off from normal people. You but broke it, did uh, you? Uh, what was that? You broke it. I, well, I didn't break in. There was a, I saw this bus go up there, and I thought, well, yeah, where yeah. there must be going inside. <laughs> so this chap had had a paid group of people. He, he was giving a, 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 a guided tour of the area, too. Uh, I hadn't paid for it, but uh, he had the gate open. So, you know, when the gate is open, you just have to pass through. Oh, you do? <laughs> and I must admit, it was in amazing condition, the way they kept it all. It yeah. went really, really well. But things like Scarabray, I mean, I would go back to Scarabray many times and still see something new. I would just take the workshop in Scarabray. It was amazing, the workshop. And uh, the, the difference between the workshop and the living conditions, living houses. I mean, it, was, it was such an amazing place with so much to see. And then you on the in the Viking village, over on the Bruff of Bursay, there. I once again, you know, it was, it was again an amazing place to see. It just to walk them along around it and think of, of the people who've been there in the past. It, it's, it, it is a really amazing place. And the Ring of Stones, the Ring of Stones, the Land of Stains, uh, the Ring of Stones, and things like that. It, it, it was just, just place after place. And, and, I was very tempted to go trout fishing. You saw the trout fishing uh, area there, and I was chatting to the chaps there, and I was uh, finding out about what flies to use and where to go fly fishing. <laughs> yeah. do, 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 do you know what, Pete? Right, there was um, when when I went up there for my graduation in two thousand and eighteen. Um, to 2019 or whenever it was, um, we took Owen with us, right? Mm. Oh we, yeah. We dropped we dropped him off, right? And he he, he didn't pay to go in to see Scarra Bray, right? Mm. Chip off the old block, um, and he went over there, right? And 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 the manager followed him all the way over there. I said, "You haven't paid," and he said, "Oh, I have, I have." So he looked around. Mm. Um, so so 
Actually, they chased him off the side. <laughs> and then when mm. we went to pick him up, it was, Dad, go on, I've got to get in the car now. They're after me. So we have to <laughs> just drive on. Chip there was off one the old point where feet. me and Kaz went to a, went to a croft. And uh, we lit a fire in the croft. From yeah. some of the uh, some of the uh, um, the, um, the 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 uh, uh, wood from the sea and, and the bladder rack, but yeah, and, and the bladder rack, and the bladder, the bladder rack. rack. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. did. You went off somewhere else then to to the uh, to the forest, didn't you? Yeah, and Briardale. And you know what? That you you had a great experience. I had a great experience, mm -hmm. and it was just. That, that that's what the island gives you that those yes, experiences it does. absolutely it does and that's why i went back with my motor room because and i hope to go back again at some point there's still so much there to see the Isla road and i take can you pick me up on route pete <laughs> <laughs> but we're all going <laughs> yeah, i'd love to go when we too. when we were there, there was the well, um, I think the, I think the, the uh, oh. prince and princess of of Norway was at Kirkwall, going into the uh, cathedral to a service. There was a special service for the uh, princess, prince and princess of of Norway. Yes, there's a cathedral there. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. I think everybody's yes. going. I think Carl's painted a. Such a delightful scene. I think all of us would be yeah. absolutely yeah, enthused to go. I mean, it just sounds you a certainly marvelous would, place, yeah. doesn't it? Absolutely. It, it, Soul it's, made. More it's more delightful. Sorry to interrupt. It's more delightful than even I'm making out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he talked about May's How. May's How was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the burial mound at May's How. And how yes. it was lined up with the uh, with the, uh, the the stone, the ring of stones as well. Yes. You know, when they found Scarabray, yes. was it, was it was it just a series of green mounds? No, it was the the, the sand got washed away during a storm. Ah. And they showed us all the first outlines of the buildings, and then the the farmer who had the land decided to open it up, and wow. from that point on, it it became. Well, we know it as today, and it's an absolutely amazing site. And it's simply been covered by are, sand. You wonder if there are maybe more of those. There well, are. Probably there is. Are there? There, yeah. there? There are. Obviously, the one on North Ronaldsley. Mm -hmm. And um, and and you've got that, that little one at Barn House, which is near the Nessa Brodka. It's nothing like the one at Scarabray. No. Um, but we do believe that there's more buildings at Scarabray, but they haven't excavated them yet. And it, it, the thing is, um, the thing is, there's so much, there's so much on the islands that uh, we, we just haven't looked at. Um, the but they've got to Yes. That's an amazing bit of... Um, oh, the rock, the old the man. Bit of, bit yeah. of rock, it is. The old man of Hoy, it is an amazing beast. I was, I mean, it's still standing. Mm -hmm. and separated from the mainland yeah it's mm -hmm. amazing but people have climbed up that with they hardly have. any yes. equipment haven't because they it's so We're not doing it. <laughs> because it's so unique absolutely yeah yeah mm. and we yeah, saw yeah. people climbing up it when we were going past on the ferry oh, <laughs> my god <laughs> weird um right okay um Jean, or anything you'd like to say no, no, thank you. It's all very interesting. David. Oh, thank you. Nothing else from you, Anne? Only to say, I think you gave us a sense of wonder. I think it was really, really lovely. Thank you for it. It's a pleasure. And you haven't seen the images yet, so that's what we'll do after the break. <laughs> uh, Andy. No, I'm good, thanks. OK, uh, my voice is holding out. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hedge my bets beyond 9.30. So um, we, we, we will end. We will end at 9.30 today, simply because just in case. Um, so I'm going to, um, you know, you know, if I if I, you know, if I'm driving down the road and I pulled over by the police, you know, I don't want to 
not argue with the police, do I? So I need my voice. <laughs> David's been oh, too old, no. haven't you? That's a good you... reason to have your voice in good, just in case you've got to argue with us, please. <laughs> David went to Orkney a few years ago, didn't you? Yes, and we went uh, a couple of months ago, just mm. for a day. Did you? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. What did you think, David? Can't remember the name of it now. Surely excavation. Ah, uh, the Nessa Brodka, exactly. Exactly, the Nessa Brodka. Right, we'll take a little break, folks. We're not going to be long. Five minutes. Okay. Okie doke. I've got to have those noodles. Hmm. <laughs>
What is this? Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I ripped them. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll get you some new ones, okay? From Valley Village. I thought I would drink. What is this? Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I ripped them. Oh no. Yeah. $30. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll get you some new ones, okay? From Valley Village. I Do you know what I might do? Is it mine? I have a cup of tea. I have a cup of tea. I have a cup of tea. <laughs> Have you been there, Andy? Andrew? No. You haven't? Wait, I'd switch my mic back on. No, I'm not. I'd love to go. Perhaps we should have an on-site road trip. Well, you That'd be very it. nice. That'd be good, would you recommend it? it? Yeah. Hire a minibus between us all. Well, that's what we did. We hired a minibus. Yeah. We flew up to Inverness. Right. And then we hired a minibus from Inverness. I was the driver of it. Yeah. And uh, I said we drove up to Thurso, crossed on the ferry to Orkney and uh, drove all around Orkney with it. What time of year did you go? About April. Yeah, I guess that would be about the best time, wouldn't it? Yeah. I liked it so much, I went back after with my motorhome. Just by yourself? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, stay just outside Stromness. It was very difficult to get a campsite place. Was it? Because it was so busy and full. It was in the summertime and it was so busy and full. Yeah. It was very difficult to get a place. I could only get stay there for three days, actually, on the island. Yeah. Mm. I think it's gaining in it. popularity. There's been a lot of programs about oh, yes. it, hasn't there? So a lot of people are interested in going yeah. into the Hebrides. I had my little motor scooter on the back of my motorhome, so I was able to Great. pop around on that, the 125 scooter. Yeah. 
But the, the, the weirdest thing was when we, um, after we had had our first trip to Orkney, the second one that we organised, um, they said they, they, they stopped people being able to hire minibuses on the island. Oh. So you can't actually hire a minibus on the island anymore. Oh, gosh. Oh. You, you've got to actually hire it on the mainland. I don't know why that is. Something to do with the insurance. Mm. Mm. I did get my £300 deposit back, Carl. You what? I got my £300 deposit back. Did you? Yep. <laughs> That was after all the scratches and damage that Bill caused with his driving. <laughs> he, insist, he insisted that he put on the insurance to drive and he does an hour. Yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> but you went, you went back to, you went to the university for a day, didn't you? And left us yeah, on our own. And you guys went off. And we went to the Ring of Brodka, I believe. That's the one. And we went all around it. That's where I met the fishermen. And it was there, I don't... When I went the second time, when I saw this uh, Scottish gentleman dressed up with his kilt and all the regalia and everything, the sporran and everything on, and uh, he was marching across from the ring. And I, I thought, well... He's, he looks original. So I, I spoke to him and said, hello. He said, hiya, mate. He was from America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you didn't ask him to lift up his kilt then? <laughs> no, I didn't ask him to lift his kilt. <laughs> <clears throat> then you could have said, if he had lifted it up and he had boxer shorts underneath, you could have said, that's not very authentic. <laughs> I, my nephew's wedding down in Penzance, we all wore Cornish kilts and the groom went commando. Oh, very bright. How do you know? Because mm -hmm. he said. Because he, he showed us. Oh, did he? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. From the back. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> Mm. Uh, I'm glad yeah, you mentioned that. The one split with the. Uh... Mm. They're amazing, those stones. Right. Oh, oh I see, you had the workshop there as well. You, you, on that picture, you had the workshop from uh, Scarabray. What was in the workshop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but basically. Yeah, there, that, that, yeah. that one there. That's the oh, workshop right. of Scarab Ray. Oh God. So we we will we will look we will come back to these things. So if we mm. if we look at that, it just sort of this little plan, it just shows you how detailed everything is. Mm. You know, you 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 just need you need a day to take all of this in. There's so and, much of um, it. I mean, just one area. This, this is the World Heritage Site. So obviously the Loch of Senes and the Loch of Harry. Um, and so if we, if we sort of get this into a little bit of perspective, and just within that very small area, you can see uh, Mice How, um, Ring of Buchan, um, the Mound of Buchan, the Ring of Brodga, the Watch Stone, Stones of Stennis, Barn House, the Unston Chambered Khan. That is another place that I've taken people to. We've been to all of these. But if somebody said, you know, are there sites on mainland Orkney that you haven't been to? I'd say yes, of course there is. The Stones you, of Stennis and the entrance to Mays How are aligned. Uh, um, similar to... Uh, um, Stonehenge, they're aligned in the in the uh, to the sun sun rise or sunset. Yes, he's right. So, again, we have mentioned 
that is. Oh, that's you know, it, yeah. That's the workshop. That, yeah. No, that's not the workshop, Pete. That's the that's the house. Oh. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. That's like the furniture, isn't it? The stone oh, furniture. Yes. Well, yeah. actually, actually, to be honest with you, I'm going to say Pete's half right because you would have used that as an active workshop and you would have you would have uh, worked in there anyway and lived in there. So, but the actual workshop as a place, that's another building. So I'll give you I'll give you a point for that, Pete. Okay. But what the would the, thing, what would the standing headroom have been? Do you think? Actually, do you want to see the reconstruction? Yeah. Let's look at the reconstruction. The the one the one way of doing this today is just to you know I did say at the beginning obviously it was um, it was going to be difficult for me to do the subject that I want to do do today because it was like whatever Scarabray reconstruction. So if we if we look at the reconstruction um, and there it is. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let's just get there it is. Oh, with a proper room. Now, the problem is with this is that um, lots of reconstructions are made to, to accommodate tourists. <clears throat> now, the one thing that we, the, the, the two things that the, reco the, the roof here looks too high, mm. right? Um, because actually on site, you can actually see that that's got a flatter roof. That one there, which is a reconstruction there. That mm -hmm. one, there are eight buildings. And that one at the top before the, before the house is actually the workshop. And we do believe that on the easterly, well, not the easterly side. Yeah, it is the easterly side because the, uh, hang on a minute, there you go. Uh, no, but hang on. On the westerly side, because this points west, sorry. On the westerly side, which is a seaside there, um, we do believe that there were many more buildings, it, it's, except they've been eroded into the sea. So there are eight buildings per se, and we do believe that there's further buildings actually um, on the left there, um, and maybe towards the north and the south. We, we do know that this is all made um, or built into a big shell midden with basically millions and millions of limpet shells and other shells. Um, and probably the reason why they did that was, was there, there was the existing mound. And the one thing that I would say about the roof height. So answering your question, Margaret, it's, it's likely if you were six foot five, you'd be banging your head on the beams. <laughs> Mm. And guess what, Margaret? I have been working in archaeology for a very long time. And the roof of my building here is not much taller than this, than the roof that you're seeing there. Mm. In other words, if somebody was six and a half foot, they would bang their heads on the beams in, in the building I've constructed. Because the one thing that we do know about these buildings is if they've got a, a low a low threshold, it means that your roof is not going to be affected by storms. This village would not have been near the sea back then. No. But without trees, um, taller gabled roofs would naturally be exposed to the elements. Um, and I've seen that in action living in West Wales in the storms. If you've got a tall gabled roof. So um, I, I the, the, um, the entrances into the little store buildings that I built here are basically one metre high because I was expecting really bad winters down here, which I've not had. And everything, when I'm building something, I'm, I'm basing it on stuff that I know. And guess what I've been most of my life? An archeologist. 
So if I'm going to build, I'm going to build mm. with what I know. If Peter's going to build, he's going to build um, in regards to the buildings he's been around. If Andy's going to build, he's going to build in the sense of the buildings that he rents out, right? So we, we've all got our, our draw and connection, which influences us. So the giving a talk on Scarabray with, with all the facts is something that we need to do. However, Scarabray tells us one thing with what you started off with, Margaret. The past is a lot more complex and a lot more diverse than lots of archaeologists make it out to be. This building, the one in front of you, when they excavated it, they found that there was a membrane on top of the shell midden of like a blue marine clay, which was like a, a waterproof membrane. And there is also, um, there, there's also a, there's also, um, there's also um, culverts running, running underneath the buildings um, so that you can have toilets which are flushed. You've got naturally flushing toilets. And that is innovation in the Neolithic period 6,000 years ago. Flushing toilets. So if you go to toilet, it just flushes away. And that's what we find in these buildings. This is why Scarabray is so important, but it's not by any means unique. North Ronaldsley, a similar site. And the difference with North Ronaldsley, it's North Ronaldsley. It's not on the tourist route because it's so far out. You've got to get on a plane to go there. Or maybe if you want to spend five hours on the ferry, you would eventually get there. Then you'd have to come back. There is other sites like this, but this is the the type site, the stereotypical type site of understanding Neolithic settlement in and in and around Orkney. As this is not supposed to be a talk about Scarabray, we've got to look at some of the other sites. But if you if you just quickly look at this. Hang on a minute, we're going to be able to, no, we're not going to be able to do there. Okay, there we go. Was it not? Oh, there we go. You can see what, you can see that, that that's actually Peter's workshop. Oh. And you, you can get an idea that obviously <laughs> there's not much more in regards to roof level. And one of the things that I will say is that there wasn't long timber in existence on Orkney back when they were building these structures. However, there would have been timbers washed up on the shoreline. Um, and they would have been able to collect smaller timbers inland from newly fresh growing trees and smaller trees that have been blown over. And the way you do it, do it is tie it together. So uh, when I was, um, I did it yesterday myself, I had two bits of wood and I needed a beam, not, not, for, the, not for the house, but I needed a beam for uh, the animals. So I just, um, I, I made a framework to fit the beams together instead of tying it. On, and that's what you do. So if you haven't got a long enough piece of, of wood, you, you, um, you sort of make a framework or you tie them together. This is what these people did. So you know those stone shelves, <clears throat> the yeah. stone shelves in the house, yeah. were yeah. they used to store food? Do you think? Did they find any evidence of food being stored there? And, and pottery you, and, and uh, other stuff as well. Yeah. I'll give you. Oh. I'll give you. I'll give you my answer another way. Right, that's a street. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's a street. Right. So in other words, if we go to 
If we go to there, the workshop, they had, they would have had ornaments. They would have had keepsakes. They would have had things to remind them of loved ones. They would have had celebrations like Christmas. Do you know what I mean? Well, they, they found they, some. Uh, they found they were jade, jade, jade beads from Whitby, didn't they? In and what? those beads were those beads were found in a trail. Yeah. Um, it was almost as if they left quickly, ah. and those beads were found um, dotted along the floor as they wrecked out the building. Oh God. Um, and that may have been to do with, um, i.e., a massive stand sandstorm. Yeah. Um, because this landscape of archaeology become buried under sand. Mm. So these people must have thought, oh, bloody hell, we've got a sandstone coming in. If we don't go, we're going to suffocate. Mm. So they used to refer, they used to refer this as the Pompeii of the North yeah. or, um, yeah, or the, or the Chattel Hayek of the North, you know, that type of thing. So, so in other words, the, the answer to the shelves is actually the 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 street, because these people are as normal as us. They just didn't have plastic and they didn't have mobile phones, but they had love, life, children, being able to survive, death. They had animals. They had meaning. They had connection. They had lifelines. They had a sense of who they were. They existed. They were people. They were you and me. Again, I want to look at some other buildings because it's not fair, mm -hmm. but there you go. Mm -hmm. And I've got to just say one thing before we go off this image, right? And before we go away from Scarra Bray from, from today, we will, we're going to do a whole day on, we're going to do a whole two and whatever hours on Scarra Bray, right? But the only changes that Gordon Child made with the excavations of the night late 1920s, 1930s, um, was that that little hole in there so his, so his um, niece could actually look out, out at oh. sea. <laughs> I was going to say, is that a little window? <laughs> that's, that's a window for a child that he put in oh, there, yeah. Fancy that. And actually, um, the, that, what, that's a grinding stone there. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that these would have been lined with clay. We know that they were lined with clay because we found clay. Right. If these people are right, just cut the crap. If these people were able to put a, a blue membrane underneath the building to stop to stop the damp, they were perfectly capable of lining a container like this with clay and to have live food in it. Mm. So that their refrigerators was the live animals. So they had fresh food because if these people had stomach upsets, they didn't have rene, right? If these people had food poisoning, it could mean the it could mean the difference between life and death for their animals out at, out on the field, right? So they could not afford for things to go wrong. They had right. This is this is an important thing, right? You know, you said about this archaeologist coming up with ideas, right? I'll give you I'll give you an idea now, right? We know that these people had such a thing known as hygiene. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, they would all have died. Mm -hmm. When archaeologists don't, if when archaeologists say that they didn't wash their hands, right? When archaeologists said that they didn't wash their food, when archaeologists say that they didn't have fresh food, right? They would have all died. If they mm -hmm. had the same, they had similar diseases back then as we do today. Back then they, they were life, you know, it's some people who had food poisoning back then, they would die, mm. right? You had to keep things clean. When you go to toilet, you had to have your waste going somewhere. You had to make sure the flies weren't buzzing around your building, um, moving diseases around. All the evidence is to say at Scarra Bray is that these people were highly advanced mm. without the need of having televisions or mobile phones. Right. Look at this one. 
Hang on. Uh, right, here we go. This. This is not the Ring of Brodga. This is the Ring of Stennis. Yeah. And one thing... Right. Two things I learned from this day, being here with the archaeologist Martin Carruthers, right? Was don't have two people in the group who are lying on that stone whilst Martin Carruthers is trying to tell a serious history of the archaeology. <clears throat> Which wasn't very funny because they were members of Archaeology Cymru. On a serious note, what he told us was that that stone was no slaughter or altar stone. It was a stone that had been erect like the other stones running around. Oh. These stones themselves, the thing that we learned was that they probably represented individual families. And they were shaped to look like that. And it was like a revelation that this monument connected to us. This is within the landscape of, of the Ness of Bronca, the Ring of Stennes. Because most people, when they go to Orkney, right, they always think, hang on a minute, they always think of these stones, the Ring of Brodga. Now, I get, I'm going to say it as it is, right? I don't think the Ring of Brodga is as fascinating as all the other sites. And the reason why it's full of tourists, mm. it, it's, it's Orkney's equivalent of Stonehenge. Right. I realized that what I've just said just that second is completely wrong. Because when I went there for my for my graduation, right? I went there late at night. And um, my son was sat in the car, and Michelle was asleep in the car. And I said to my son, Owen, I said, look. I'm going to take all my clothes off, right? And I said, I don't care if you see your dad naked, right? He was 18 anyway, so it didn't matter. So I said, I said, I stripped off my clothes, right? And I ran around the ring of Bronco. There was nobody else around, right? And then I connected with it because there was nobody else there. And I realized how amazing the ring of Bronco is, right? Um, I was able to run around this site barefooted, right? Completely stark naked. And it was, I was connected to the landscape. There was no glass. There was no plastic. There was no tourists around. There were no buses. There was no lights in the distance. There was nothing. It was pitch black and it was brilliant. And I connected with an amazing monument. I thought I'd share that with you. Was it, um, moonlit? Was it moonlit? Um, no, it was, it wasn't. Well, you're lucky you didn't run into one of those big rocks then. <laughs> oh, I could see them. Could you? Yes. <laughs> you could sense them. Of course I could see them. They're not invisible. <laughs> right, okay. Here we go. Now this is that site which is near Stennis which is the one on the map. You've got Stennis, you've got the Ring of Brodgut North, and you've got this other site called Barn House, right? Um, and this is like, this is a crude precursor to something like to Scarabray, for example. Um, this itself is an earlier Neolithic site. This is probably dated back to about 7,000 years ago. But what they're doing is they're, they're developing what to do with stone, what to do with earth, what to do with sods of earth. And this is that settlement that goes into um, the loch, which is north. And the one thing as well is, is that this was, this had everything to do with Scarabray, even though it was some miles away, um, because people lived here. 
Um, and everyone on Orkley's connected back then as they are now. You, you know, it's a weird place, Orkney. It's a beautiful place, but it's a weird place in the sense that everything's got a place. Everything's connected. At different times of the day, Orkney has a different meaning, as I've already demonstrated. And there you go. There's that ring of Bronco again. Now, there have been excavations at the Ring of Bronca. But what we do know about the Ring of Bronca, it's the precursor to Stonehenge. This came before Stonehenge. Stonehenge is not the first stone, stone circle site in the country. You think, about, you think about any stone circle site in Britain, did they evolve from the Ring of Brodka? Did they all evolve separately? But the one thing as well is, if this evolved independently than any other stone circle in Britain, without any influence going back and forth, it says one thing, that people in Britain are developing in similar ways because of similar things that are happening to them. An island landscape the trees going, needed to feed yourself, more population, dangerous animals, changes in, um, changes in temperature, changes in the environment, things that we all seek and suffer today, that things that all happened in the past, all thanks to me looking at these models that we see with the likes of Orkney. Let's, let's keep looking at these images. Let's keep looking at a bit of an overview. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go here. Hang on a minute. Let's get that big. Why is it not big, going bigger? Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'll get it in a minute. Yep. That there is my house. And you know what? We're not going to show you an image inside my house today because the mound itself is one of loads of different mounds across the island, islands, the archipelago and the mainland of Orkney. And I remember going first into this mound in the very worst of weathers. My... <clears throat> I go there and I, you know, what we've got, we've got horizontal rain, right? There, there's snow on the ground outside and we go in here and it's like another world. This is what Orkney does to you. You turn around the corner and there's another world, right? And, and you go into this wonderful monument and it's almost as if you want it to be a burial chamber it's, we believe that it was built out of a stone circle, right? Is it something else before a burial chamber? It's definitely something after it was a burial chamber because the Vikings visited there. It's something very special today. And it's, it's also part of the living landscape of Orkney today. It's as it's been, as it will be, as it can be. And there it is. It doesn't look much from above, but when you go in there, it definitely is. Um, you walk down that trackway and you go through here and you get some signs and you, and you go in here. It's a Scottish heritage site. And because it's so popular, right, word of warning, if anyone ever, um, if anyone ever does, if you guys ever do want to go to Orkney and make sure you book in advance to go to the Mice, uh, Mice How because it's, um, it's bookable only. You just can't go over there. You've got to book in advance. And the best time to go to Orkney, mark my words, is March. It's bloody cold, but there's not many tourists there. Um, 
best thing to fly as well because the ferries ain't always the best in March. So fly over there. That's the best. Go to Aberdeen and fly. Beautiful, really good accommodation in Aberdeen. Dean, I stayed in Aberdeen. And actually, the um, one of the things is that when we, um, when I was last out in Orkney, um, we, we there, there was, it was, it, it, I think it was the day the Ari, Ari Ariana Grande concert was happening and we just didn't want to fly to Manchester. Um, so we decided to, we said the fly be, we said, look, you know, we're not going, we're not going to Manchester, right? So they said, fair enough. We'll book you on another flight the next day. You've got the accommodation. Um, and I, and that's, that speaks of, of the Scottish airlines. They're brilliant. They'll do anything for you because they want you in Scotland. And they want you to look at these sites on Orkney. So I would actually, I would actually get a vehicle to Aberdeen and actually fly there. That's my, that's my thing. And take the local buses. Honestly, the, 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 the local bus service on Orkney is absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't want to do too much of this now, but this is the excavations. It's a bit blurred, and I'm glad it's blurred because. I don't want to give too much away, but those individual buildings there, um, individual buildings, there's one called the temple, all these other things at the Ness of Bronca. Um, and, and one of the things about the Ness of Bronca is that they're, they're finding so much. And we do believe that the Ness site, which is actually owned by an archaeologist, um, Nick Card, um, and... He's actually got sheep as well, Shetland sheep, just like me. And um, Nick, Nick Card, okay, I fell out because of one of my students, um, but um, Bill had an argument with Nick Card, Peter. It didn't go down well. Anyway, this site itself, Nick, to his credit, he's, he's they're excavating, they're excavating further down, and we do believe we're going to get really early, really early Neolithic, really, really late Mesolithic activity at this site. It's happening, it's coming, and it's it's so much to learn from this site. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take you to um, two other sites that we've mentioned. Um, and I'm going to take you to North Ronaldsley as well. So I'm going to take you to mine how, mine how there it is. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That is actually, are we looking down? Are we looking up, right? We're looking up at the ceiling. Right, that itself is actually the 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 rock cut souterrain at mine how, not mice how, mine how, and I love mine how, and the reason why I love mine how is that it was actually it was actually a time team episode, right, and and. One of the things what I'm gonna what they did is that they that they reconstructed they reconstructed one of these structures at Mine How. There is the I think that's the reconstruction, um, but this is the time team reconstruction. Um, and the one thing about Mine How is that they it's an early site, a prehistoric site. The dates are a bit mixed, um, and then what we then find is that we find Roman pottery there. And there's evidence to say that in the Roman era, there was a, there was a metal worker who was skilled in the ways of Roman Empire metal working at this site of mine how. That's why I love the site because it's so detailed. Um, and it was actually found in the late 1940s. Um, 
and it's a it's a family run it's a family run sort of enterprise. Um, there we there we go. If I can get that there, if that will come up, come on. Come on, will it will it let me do this? I'm getting. Oh, there we go. Um, well, what are we looking at? Right, okay, we're looking at the caravan that's got Roman pottery in it. Um, we're looking at the reconstructions there somewhere, but that mound there, that little thing on top of the mound there within this area, that's the mine house site. So you go down there. They found bodies and all sorts of things. That is an amazing site. Oh, God, this is wearing me out. Right, so as you can see, my voice is starting to go. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the Tomb of the Eagles. This is on South Ronaldsley. Now, there's a sad story about the Tomb of the Eagles. It says permanently closed there. And the problem is with the Tomb of the Eagles, it was one of those sites. There we go. Isbister Chambered Khan. It was found by Ronnie Simerson in the 1950s. And his daughter, his daughter ran the site. Um, and the problem, the problem is, is that um, I, I know her father passed away and because of family problems, the site's not open at this minute. But it's well worth keeping an eye. And I tell you now, if, if they do reopen the Tomb of the Eagles, go there when it's reopened. Tomb of the Eagles Museum, they've got a little cafe there. Um, if you get a little group, they'll welcome you and mention me and Archaeology Cymru because they, were, they loved us there, right? But that there, if I can get this on, Tomb of the Eagles. And Pete, I don't think you ever went to the Tomb of the Eagles. No, with me. no, no. But um, you went to, well, you remember that time that those two went ahead and there was a burial chamber like this on Sunday and they didn't wait. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, right. It's, it's very similar to this. And when they originally excavated this in the 1950s, they found lots of human remains in there. And, and the story about the human remains is for another day. But near there, I'll tell you a, I'll tell you a little weird story. Um, I don't know if I can get the image. I'm just, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'll tell you a little. There's a weird little story I want to tell you. Hang on a minute. Tomb of the Eagles. Um, I'm going to type in this. I wasn't going to do this, but I want to share this with you. Bird mapped. Okay, here we go. Bird mound. Uh, oh. Hang on a minute. I want to find something else. Stop showing. Okay. Basically, this is this is the place known as the Burnt Mound, and um, what it is, there's a little stream nearby, and what they used what to do, to? they used to have a big fire, and they used to put stones into the fire, and then they used to put them into vats in the ground. It would heat the water, and they would have a fresh flow of water. Um, two points the fresh flow of water see sanitation and cleanliness so when you've heated the water up and you've you've heated up whatever you've got you would let up one sluice and the water would go out and you'd open up another sluice and fresh water would come in and you could boil up more whatever but there's been just just think of it that there's there's talk that this building could have actually been a sauna mm. Mm -hmm. saying no more and the reason why I wanted to show you this before the last site I want to go to a North Ronald's, Ronald's Bay, um, is is um, do, do I show you that site on Rousey no I do I 
I'll, I'll, I'll show you the site on Rousey because I, I there's like another 50 sites I could show you, but I'm not going to. Okay, I'll show you the other site on Rousey, but we'll go to North Rollsey after this. Um, near by here parked up is um, is a Rommel, um, is, is, is a Rommel um, captured um, uh, des desert, desert uh, rats, isn't it? And uh, I got that right. Um, and basically, there's there's a there's an ambulance which was captured from the Germans, and it's parked there. Huh. And it's really weird. There's an ambulance from the deserts of North Africa parked by here, and you look at it and you think, this is so screwy. And then you see a site that's thousands of years old. It's really, really weird. Really, really weird. Um, so what we need to do is go to North Ronaldsley and North um, North Ronaldsley. Ronald. There we go, Ronaldsley. Um, um, prehistoric site, if we can get it. Prehistoric. Uh, prehistoric. So if we can type that in, I'm not sure we can get it, but we'll see if we can. Um, oh God, oh God. Yeah, it's the place in the North Ronaldsley Street Sheep. Mm. Um, North Ronaldsley, North Ronaldsley, North Ronaldsley. Brocks, stuff being eroded into the sea. Um, North Ronaldsley, prehistoric village, if we type that in there. Oh, basically, an opportunity to get a... Um, a North Ronaldsley ram the other day, but there's one problem. You've got to feed them on seaweed. North Ronaldsley village. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? North Ronaldsley village. Oh, God, is it here? Um, maybe we'll have to come to that again. There's a North Ronaldsley is the one that's got the other bit of the village on yet. This is dominated by images of Scarabray, but... Um, there is another little village on North Ronaldsley, like Scarabray. Um, and then we haven't found that one, which is a bit disappointing. I've come up trumps with everything else. Um, hang on. If we type in the Neolithic village, maybe we'll get it. Um, Neolithic. Neolithic village. Prehistoric village. Neolithic village. Nope. It's not coming up, you see, because it's all dominated by... Scarabray, which is a bit of a shame, mm. but it is there, it does exist. Um, it does exist, it certainly does. Not there, but mm. um, I remember right, it was covered with uh, the, with car tires oh. when we were there. Ah, that, that's the Nessa Brodger site. Um, but what we're going to do, um, the other site that we're going to do. Uh, which is going to be the pleasure resistance. One fail today, that's not too bad. Um, Rousey, we're going to do Midhow. It's, it's called Midhow. And it's um, chambered, not check. Look at that. They built an aircraft hangar over it. Yeah. That, as I say, I, I mentioned this, that's also in the ancient Britain book. They built it, when they excavated it, they built an aircraft hangar over it. So you could actually walk on the warp board to look down at it. And they didn't need to bury it. They protected it. And it's a wonderful site. Neolithic, amazing. And again, that deserves a whole lecture in itself um it's a stalled car and what 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 it is is that um again five thousand five hundred years ago four thousand years ago um let's just try and get this in there what's happening between each of these stalls there there's a there's a slab um and there's a hollow space in the slab. What we do believe is that people, when, when 
uh, bodies were rested on these slabs. Um, and when, when the flesh had rotted away, they were placed underneath and more bodies were placed on it, placed underneath. And then finally, the, the one interesting, the, another massive interesting thing about this is in the Iron Age, they, they dug into this and used this as a pantry. And like an underground souterrain, but it was reused in the Iron Age for something completely different. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna call it a day. Um, that's giving you a, a tiny little bit of an overview, not really much, but we, we've managed to do it. So, um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if there are any questions. Stop share. Right, go for it. Peter. No, I'm fine. I'm well, I, I've been there, as you say. I've seen most of it. So uh, I'll leave it to the others to see what they want to know. Excellent. Right, start with David. Anything you would like to say, David? Thank you. Okay, who's next? We'll have a, we'll have a lady next. Uh, Margaret. I noticed there's a few places called Something How, and there's a lot of places in Cumbria called Something How. Is it a Viking word? You know what? I'm going to look that up myself now. Good question. Um, um, anything else you'd like to ask while I'm looking this one up? Um, well, Maze How looks very much like Newgrange in Ireland. I, I would say that how means mound, but I'm just going to double check. Ah. Yeah, it does mean mound. It means a hill or a barrow, tumulus, mound. Yeah, I just wondered if it was a Viking word. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Uh, right. Anything else you'd like to ask, lovely? Well, just that it looks, Maze How looks very much like Newgrange in Ireland, doesn't it? Uh, but do you know what I'm going to say? Doesn't it, Pete? Are you saying no? No. He was shaking the reason, his head. <laughs> the reason why I'm going to say no, right, is because the um, Mice How, right? Hmm. Mice How is more complete and more original than Newgrange. Yeah. And guys, what I'm going to do is admit I've made a mistake. It <gasps> wasn't North Ronaldsley. It was a little island known as Papa Westray. And you're going to see images of the other village of Papa Westray that I said was in North Ronaldsley. Let's, let's look at this now. And you will see this. This is... Uh, well preserved, but nobody goes there because it you've got to fly to the island. Um, right, let's just um, let's look. You've got to see this. You've got to um, let's go there now. Um, whoa, right there. Oh yeah! Look at that. Wow. That is okay. Papa Westray. Do you notice that this is? Not really kept as well as Scarabray. It's near the coast, so it, it, it's vulnerable, right? But this is Papa Westray, and you can see it closer to as Gordon Child excavated the site in the night. He, he didn't, I don't think he excavated this site, but if you want to compare it with, there we go. Look at that. Mm. That's Papa Westray. So in other words, it's off the beaten track and is more purer than the Gara Bray. The methods of construction we... are so similar, they must have learned from each other. Yeah. Mm. And it's all dry stone walling. Do they, when it's exposed now, do they put mortar in there? No, no. They just no. leave it as it, the original state. Leave it, leave it as it is, yeah. Um, again, this is... If we type in Papa Westray plan, uh, Papa Westray, if we type in a plan, we can get. I don't want to do too much more on this. The now. natural geology so, must be layered by la layered limestone. Mm. We've got a, we've got a map of Papa Westray. 
it's a tiny island um uh, and you and you basically fly there it's got it's got it's got a runway um and again if you you look at that and you think this is the uh, look at that mm. that's it in its rawest form that is papa westray so um okay anything else you'd like to ask margaret well, it, they've got proper lintels in and everything over the doorways and the mm. windows. It's very advanced building, isn't yeah. it? It's a natural yeah. geology. It was all layered limestone. Yeah. Sandstone. All Sandstone. right. You sure? It doesn't look like sandstone. It's sandstone. All right, then. What do I know? Okay. And actually, can I, can I, chuck, you, can I chuck a fact away? Um, the island of Hoy is iron. Um, very near, very near um, Scala Bray is a seam of iron. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think you can, you can see that, I believe, near the old man of Hoy, where there's red staining of the uh, uh, down the side of the uh, actual cliff. It gives you the indication that there would have been iron there. The red I'll go staining. With that. Mm -hmm. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Um, right. Anything, nothing else from you, Margaret. So what about Annie? Well, I haven't got a question exactly, but it does seem to me they were amazingly talented people. And as as you've sort of given us before on the, they, they work with their environment and what they've got, which is which is why they became so skilled with stone, which is, what, what was around them. But also you said you gave us an overview and it wasn't much. And I thought it was a staggering amount of stuff today. And I'm looking forward to hearing more of it. <laughs> it will be done over the next few months, um, yeah, yes. bit by bit with all the other sites. So you yeah, can... I was gonna say there's months of it you can see. There's so much there, yes. And that's over just all or so where you get the ferry, just um a little way from there, there is a major um, uh, slab factory, if you like, yeah. where they did break the stone into slabs uh -huh. and place them around the area. Yeah. And uh, that was a factory. I can't remember the name of it now. I've got yeah. a picture of yeah. it. And I've, yeah. I've got the name of it somewhere. Yeah. Gosh, just using <laughs> stone. Would they have just had stone tools then? They would, wouldn't they? No, 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 no not in the Neolithic period. They would have used flint. Oh, but what right, we do, yeah. we, we've got these weird orb type <clears throat> things that have been carved into stone and the skill of creating um, symmet um, spheres and symmetrical objects is, yeah. is so clear, but they were they were great carvers. Yeah. Um, and so the they, stone naturally could... flaked and naturally cracked in slabs. Mm. Yes. It was quite yeah. natural the way it did it. Yeah. And where you find the only... Were they the only stone buildings in Britain? Well, um, where you had that type of geology, yes, they would. Yeah, yeah. At, at that stage, where you've got stone, and you you mainly, at that stage, that's got the majority of the stone buildings mm. in Britain at that stage. Mainly they were earth and timber. Yeah. Um, right, so, Andy, anything you'd like to say, darling? Uh, no, it's just all the thing I was wondering about is what is the uh, the earliest date at the moment for that? Because I know that they're, they're digging into older and older stuff. But the earliest date for which what? Uh well, let, let's say Scarabray. So, um, possibly no earlier than six thousand years ago, but that's still incredibly, yeah. Mm, that's no, long. that's old. Yeah. It is older than you, Andy. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> are there are there any other sites older than that? Um, the problem is, it's a thing of dating, and when yeah. we do look at this, you'll be able to get the answers. The answer right. is okay. yes, yeah, but probably yeah, under the sea. It could be under the sea a lot of it, won't it? As we saw when we did the um, mm, Aus yeah. Australian lecture, that we thought right, all the stuff that the older stuff was under the sea. Mm. Because when they started to say, oh, Aboriginals only got to Australia 10 weeks ago, right? Uh, we started realising that they got there 100,000 years ago. Do you know what I mean? Mm. 
you know, this sort of <clears> insulting <throat> thing that they got off their banana boats and they're not native towards um, <laughs> Australia is highly insulting. And what you've just said is lots of the early evidence is under the water. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right there. Um, and if there's nothing else from you, Andy, right? We're going to end with Drini. No, I, no, I, it, I'm really interested in Orkney. I'd love to go there. Mm, so much. Do, do you know what I'm going to? Do you know what I'm going to say? Right. Um, is there some filming coming next, up next year with a with a certain film? And uh, if it's filmed in a certain place, I'll let you know, and we'll. Um, and if I'm involved, then we, we can meet up in Orkney. Sounds good. I can't say any. I can't say any more than that. Yeah, uh, talking yeah. about weird things. Look <laughs> at this. I'm corn flour. Yeah, I'm corn. Yeah. Oh, I've had. Oh. I've got some. I couldn't get pure icon. I managed to get icon with a mixture of two other ancient flowers because I did try ancient bread making. But yes, it's really interesting. Mm. I couldn't get it. I couldn't just get icon though on its own. Okay. <laughs> I've got a many grain flour, which I've just used to make my first loaf. I must admit that is very, very nice. Yeah. I used multigrain before that, but I couldn't get the multigrain, so I got this many grain uh -huh. and all sorts of grains mixed up in it, yeah. and it yeah. does make a nice loaf. I use half and half white and uh, and the many grain flour. Yeah. Is that is that shortages? They're getting less and less, so it'll be even lesser grain next. <laughs> I don't want to do politics, right? I don't want to do politics, right? <laughs> I'm constantly hearing that the no, price of food is not? going up everywhere, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, food is so cheap around here, I don't know what people are moaning about. I saw today, you remember last week we, we saw the old bread that was made from uh, lentils yeah. and nuts? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, today, oh. I, I found a recipe oh. for the bread oh. made with lentils. I didn't get them with the nuts. Oh, well. wow. But there was oh. a recipe, and it, it, it's made just with water and lentils. Just, oh, and okay. it, you know, I, it looked really good, so I'll have to try it. Yeah, do. Andy, we're, Andy, we're over there. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had so shop bread for something like five, years, six years. Sorry? Shop I haven't bread. had shop bread. I make my own bread. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I have. I've made it most of my life bread. Yeah. Have you got a bread, bread machine that does it, mate. Oh, like, right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, I cheat it that way. Yeah. They were very popular, those, a few years ago, weren't they? Yeah, right. we've bread got one. Machines. Have you got one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't use it anymore, though. <laughs> no. The problem with well, the... Uh... Then I started making sourdough by hand. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that, eating yeah. too much bread, so it didn't seem worth keeping the starter alive. So I'm back with the bread machine now. <laughs> yeah, we're going oh, back stuff. towards sourdough, actually. That's yeah. having it I only make a one pound loaf each time. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor sourdough, you killed it. Evil <laughs> woman. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've made bread. another oh, starter, yeah. and, uh, but I can't find my recipe, so I'll go have a thought about it. because you I do ever make... Do you make soda bread? No, I've no soda bread. I made that the other day. It was quite nice. Oh, mm. soda bread. It's what all holes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't put any butter on it because it just goes through the holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, lovely. It that means you can have more butter. So it really that's, that's true. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! My any any other questions before we finish today? No, but you took us to a very happy place. Yes, it was really really lovely. Very nice, very yeah. nice to hit. Yeah, and, and is that what that boy said on a, "I'm a celebrity, take me to a happy place"? I don't <laughs> know, but I'm going to go to bed feeling very happy. That's right. Tonight. Brought back you, a lot you, of good you memories. You managed to really give us your joy in, that you'd felt going there. It was it, you, there was a lot of um, emotion that you gave. Yeah. A always. lot of good memories of Courtney, yeah. I must admit. Yeah, it's lovely, yes. Always, always. And you'll be, uh, hopefully you'll be seeing the slides um, that I've taken rather than, yeah. So um, we'll go from there. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. Right. That'll be something. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Are they in colour? <laughs> no, black and white. Um, they're, they're the original excavation photographs that I took with Gordon Child. <laughs> <laughs> plates. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Glass plates. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Jolly good. So, um, right. Okay, then. So, if there's no other news from Andy, David, Anne, Drina, Margaret, and Peter, we'll keep it for next week. Um, thank you for joining me tonight on Wonderful Orkney. Thank you for your support. And if there's nothing else to be said, you got a second? Okay. We'll, we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Night, night, yeah. David. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Are you, are you there Bye. tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning? See you, see you tomorrow morning, Peter, yes. Good night. Good night. night Thanks, night, Carl. My pleasure. Night, night. Are you there tomorrow morning? Yes, Carl. I am, Pete. Yeah, I am. Are you tomorrow morning? Are you there? Yeah. You are. That's, that's, well, oh, no, the way your voice is going, there. I'm Am I there? No, we're online. Yeah. Oh, yeah, online, yeah. Yeah, but I heard you got the car working. Is that right? Oh, my car's working, yeah, but I won't be coming up to the... Uh, to the... Um, your, your museum... I'll be online. Well, we'll, just, we'll just do it online tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be online. Yeah. Okay. I just uh, con concerned about your voice. That was all. Yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. Uh, this, this is, uh, yeah. If, if obviously because it's an hour, it's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. If it goes, if it goes on to Thursday evening, then I'm obviously going to have a trouble. So. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the concern, Pete. And okay, I will, no. um, I will see you soon. Right. Very good. Thank you, bye. Well, see you at 11, half past 11. See you at half past 11. Take care. Bye. Cheers. No, no. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I'll get this out. And, um, yes, weird stuff. No, no, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see if there's anything in the chat box. Oh, boring lot tonight. Nothing in the chat box. That was a really good lecture. Excellent on Orkney. An individual lecture on Orkney War. Waiting for that one. Take care. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch. Keep, 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 keep the good fight, man. Don't